Hello everybody. Let's talk about the lumbar vertebra today. So we are starting with osteology and the lumbar vertebra is the first vertebra that we will be discussing. And the lumbar is the largest of all unfused vertebra. So we've got cervical vertebra which are not fused, thoracic vertebra 12 in number which are not fused and then we have 5 lumbar vertebrae which are also not fused. So the fused vertebrae are basically 2, the sacrum and the coccyx. Today we will be talking about the largest of the unfused vertebrae which is the lumbar and since you have already learned about the thoracic and the cervical vertebrae, the lumbar is different from them in that since the lumbar is not attached to the ribs at all, it has no rib facets, not even one and since there is no vertebral artery traversing, it has no foramina transverse area. So that is the basic difference between the lumbar vertebra and the other vertebrae. So if you get a large vertebra with no rib facets and without any foramina transverse area, you can confirm that it is a lumbar vertebra. Now let's see a few of the features characteristic features of the lumbar vertebra. Let's go on. So lumbar vertebra has a really large body as you can see and it is kidney shaped or reniform. That is why it is called a reniform body. And when you come to and when you compare the other three vertebra along with the lumbar vertebra, we can see that the bodies of the other three vertebra are really small compared to the massive body of the lumbar vertebra. The vertebral foramina of the lumbar vertebra is triangular in shape. You can compare again with the foramina of the cervical which is really actually circular and that of uh, almost semicircular where that of the thoracic is almost mildly triangular or even circular. But in the case of lumbar it is mostly triangular in outline. It has got really short and strong pedicles which are those small parts of the vertebra going backwards. And then it has got laminae which also pass backwards and medially to complete the vertebral canal or the vertebral arch, the spinous arch. And it has got certain superior articular facets. So as you would remember vertebrae have got both superior articular facets to articulate with the vertebra above and inferior articular facets to articulate with the vertebra below. So this, the lumbar vertebra has got two superior articular facets which are directed medially and backwards. Compared with the superior articular facets of the thoracic vertebra which I will be highlighting now, it is directed backwards, straight backwards, alright. And what about the cervical vertebra which is here, it is actually slightly slanted and directed backwards and upwards, alright. So that is how it is located. We will be seeing those vertebra in coming videos, cervical and thoracic and then we will compare all three. The lumbar transverse processes are also really slender and thin compared with the thoracic transverse processes which are really thick. So these are the differences between the lumbar and the thoracic and the cervical vertebra. Now let's try to rotate the vertebra a little bit and see the vertebra from the lateral point of view. Okay. So the lumbar vertebra can be appreciated in this view. You can rightly, we will try to slightly shift it and look at it from this view, which is its lateral view. And let's try to label the parts and see the features from this side. So this lumbar vertebra has got the body is over here, which is deeper in front, not a straight structure. It is slightly concave, and the pedicles are seen to arise slightly below the superior border of the lumbar vertebra. So that is the point of arrival of the pedicles and because of that it has got a superior and inferior spinous notch which is rather deep that you will see. But the characteristic feature of the lumbar vertebra is the spine which is quadrangular in shape that I have outlined in that picture over there really squarish in shape and the squarish shape of the lumbar vertebra is better appreciated when you shift it slightly to another angle like this and that shows perfectly the quadrangular shape of the spine of the lumbar vertebra, right? Now let's see from this angle we can also make out a few other features of the lumbar vertebra which are characteristic of the lumbar vertebra and that is this something called the mammillary process which is a rough elevation seen on the posterior border of the superior articular facet. As you can see there it is given in red and Apart from the mammillary process, the lumbar vertebra also has something called accessory process which is here. 
it is a rough elevation again a rough elevation this time on the transverse process of the lumbar vertebra along the posterior inferior aspect so that is the transverse process and the accessory process on the transverse process so these are the actual features in this view now let's tilt it all around and see the lumbar vertebra all over appreciate the shape understand that the vertebrae are irregular bones we classify bones depending on whether they are long or short or really short or irregular bones and the vertebrae belong to the irregular bone category let's label the parts so there we have the body the superior articular facet the spine and here we have the superior and the inferior vertebral notches remember from the previous slide we saw that the pedicle attaches slightly below the superior border and that is why we have a superior and inferior vertebral notch and now in this angle we can see the inferior articular facet which is also directed outwards but laterally not medially all right so this is directed outwards and laterally let's try to shift it and see the shape of it all right slightly shift it and see whether we can appreciate let's look at it from the inferior view and in this view also we can see the inferior articular facets directed outwards and laterally okay now let's see the entire vertebra the lumbar vertebra is basically designed to bear weight so all these five vertebra are arranged one above the other with those massive bodies and that is because this is the region where there is maximum bending and rotatory motions of the torso so the lumbar vertebra is the body has to be massive in order to support the weight of the vertebral column and the body as well as to allow for all those rotatory motions now once more let's classify one last time what are the features or the external parts of the lumbar vertebra so that is the body the vertebral canal cannot be seen in this angle we are looking at it from the side here we have the quadrangular spinous process a bit of it can be seen below the superior and the inferior articular facets the superior directed medially and the inferior directed outwards and laterally the transverse process is over here remember the transverse process has got the accessory process on it which is a small extension on it and then the superior articular facet has got the mammillary process these two processes are seen only in the lumbar vertebra right here we have the superior and the inferior vertebral notches right so that is our vertebra now the lumbar vertebrae like all vertebrae can be classified into atypical and typical lumbar vertebrae so the first four vertebrae l1 l2 l3 and l4 are together called typical vertebrae they share a lot of the features together but the fifth lumbar vertebra is called atypical one point to remember which is atypical and typical is wherever there is a transition between one type of vertebra to the other we get atypical vertebrae so the fifth lumbar vertebra is lying close to the sacrum and because of that it starts to gain some features similar to the sacrum it broadens itself out starting to look like the sacrum and that is why it is called the atypical vertebra so the fifth l5 is atypical right it is more massive more broad and you can see in the third picture the inferior border is more pronounced forward that is so that it can be congruent with the promontory of the sacrum all right now let's see what are the features of the fifth or the atypical vertebra and compare it with the typical lumbar vertebra so the body is obviously more massive as can be appreciated and the vertebral canal is perfectly triangular isn't it seen can you see that the perfectly triangular vertebral canal the spine is much smaller and slightly downward slants down and the transverse processes are really short you can compare that with a normal vertebra that i have placed below and the you can see that in the typical vertebra the spinous or the transverse processes are really slender while in our fifth l5 we get a really massive a really really massive transverse process in the exam suppose you are asked about the lumbar vertebrae is it possible to identify the number of the lumbar vertebra you know the fifth but what about l1 l2 l3 and l4 let's try so there is a method that we do use 
it is not foolproof but you could try. Uh, that uh, we try to identify lumbar vertebrae by comparing the shape formed by the superior and the inferior articular processes. So if you look at all the lumbar vertebrae that I have distributed all over L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5 and this is a posterior view of all these lumbar vertebrae. We can see the superior and the inferior articular processes. In the case of L1 and L2, if you were to join the centers of these articular processes, you will get a vertically oriented rectangle. Now let us superimpose that on the picture and see. So there you get it. So that is the superior and the inferior. When you join them, all four points, you get a vertically oriented rectangle. The same can be said about L2, it is slightly broader but a rectangle still, right? What about L3 and L4? In the case of L3 and L4, we get a square. So if you were to join the four points of L3 and L4, you would get a square, more or less a square, right? But what about L5? We get a transversely oriented rectangle, it is really broad transversely. So you could try to identify the number of the vertebra by turning it around and looking at the alignment of the four articular processes from behind. So when it is vertically oriented, if it is really narrow vertical rectangle, it is L1, slightly broad vertical rectangle, it is L2, almost a perfect square, L3. So in the middle, just remember the L3 is the centermost vertebra, L1, L2 above, L4, L5 below, L3 is in the middle and it is perfectly square. When you come to L4, it has started broadening out a bit, not too much, but in the case of L5, it is really widened out. Alright, so that is your lumbar vertebra for you. We will be looking at the attachments of the lumbar vertebra later on. Alright, so thank you.